Version control. It is not something that us as developers are crazy about, but you have to do it. A bug occurs and you have to get the latest version out as soon as possible. So how do you do version control within Microsoft Access? I'm going to show you how. To get started, you are going to need three folders. To create the first one, it's going to be for the developer or for development. This is the folder that you're going to keep your files in that you're actually going to make the changes in. Then you need a network folder. This is the shared folder that will contain the latest version that people will need access to. The last is the local, which is the actual copy that will reside on each user's computer. I realize I forgot to say, I am assuming that you know to split your database. Your data should be in a different location than the front end. So we call that the back end, the back end with all the data. That could either be an access file, it could be SQL database. Um, however you decide to store that data, uh, the front end is what we're dealing with here. So here we have our three folders. And the files that you're going to need within here is the version manager. You will only have one version manager. And then you will import code into any of the databases that you have. So let's pretend for a moment that I have more than one database in here. Maybe I also have a product manager. Whoops. There we go. So I have a service request, I have product manager, but I only have one version manager. And so what happens is the version manager has code in it that is going to control these databases to update the network folder to update the local folder. So we're going to dive into the version manager first, and then we're going to look at the code that you need for these databases. So let's get started with the version manager. And let's start by talking about what is the version manager. So this file is going to sit in the same location as your databases on the person's local. So you have multiple users and they're going to have a folder somewhere on their local drive with a copy of your databases or one database. In that local folder, you're going to place the version manager. And so what happens is when they open up their database, I'm just going to use the service request database as an example. They open up the service request database and it's going to automatically look at that version manager and it's going to use code to figure out if there is a more up-to-date version of the database in that network folder. So service requests may say it's 1.0 version and it's going to look at the network folder and say, oh, there's a 1.1 available. And so that version manager is managing that communication between the two files. Now, why is that necessary to be a separate file? The reason for that is when the upgrade happens, what it ends up doing is it imports the objects from the network folder file into the local copy. And the only way to do that is you, you're going to end up closing the local and then importing it into the file and then reopening it. And the only way to do the open and close is through a separate folder, or excuse me, a separate file. So that is the job of the version manager. It is allowing a communication between the network file and the local file. So you're going to put that file into your local folder so it's in the same location as whatever database um, the person's using. Now I am telling you how it works today. If you go to our Etsy shop and you end up purchasing these files which we're only selling for two US dollars um, you can get in the code and make it yours so you can definitely automate this much further than what we have done. Now, do you have to purchase these files on Etsy? No, 
but I'm going to do my best at including the code in the comments in YouTube. The only problem is there's a lot more code than uh, from my last video. So I just wanna make sure that I properly share this with you so you have a working file. So I'll do my best to include it in the comments. Um, and if not, I'll make sure that there is a link for Etsy. So in the version manager, you need two objects. One is the version update message one. So this form, is the alert to the user. What's gonna happen is when their database needs an upgrade, their database will end up um, showing this message that they need to upgrade. And so they will go ahead and click to upgrade. Um, that way, if for any reason something happened and they weren't ready to upgrade, they could still have that option. And so um, in here, we have these yellow text boxes, which are just hidden text boxes. And we can see from the name that they store like where the, um, the upgrade's coming from, which database, uh, which path, and where it's going to. That's the reason that the version manager is agnostic. It doesn't matter what database you put the code in. Um, so right now, the version manager's single standalone file, but it can communicate with any of your databases. So this is the form that you would need. And now the code behind the scenes, and again, I'll do my best in including this, this is the code that you would need there. Um, and so in addition to that, you then have a module. And so in the module is all of your code, which does the communication between the two files. And um, so I'll include that in the comments for you. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get into the code that you need to import into your service requests. So here's an example service request database. Now I just put a few objects in here. So I have like two tables and just to be transparent, there's nothing really in them. <laughs> it's really just an example. Um, and then I have a form, which is pretty much blank. So I have three objects that are really in the database, but in, whoops, in order to get the version control working, I had to create these objects. One, two, three, four, five. So these five objects I had to import into my database. So there is a version table. And so in the version table, the version ID is always one. It's just a way of having one record all the time that we can look up. And the version number is the actual version that this database is. In addition, we have a service, or excuse me, a version update form. And so if you go ahead and open that, that's what you're gonna wanna use to update the version. So let's say I change it to 1.2, you can click set version, all right, version's been updated, and it also updates that table as well, but it's also embedding in the file itself, in the properties, it's setting what the version number is. So in addition to this form here, and let me go in the code just so that you can see it, and again, I will copy it. Uh, we have the code that is doing the update for you. And then we have, I'm gonna skip ahead to the module. So this module is where really a bulk of the code is. So hopefully I can actually copy and paste this all into the comments because it is a good amount of code. Um, so I will do my best. And so what ends up happening is we have this auto execute macro. I'm assuming you know what this is. An auto execute macro, as long as it has this name, when the database opens, it executes whatever code you have um, for it to do. So right now we're saying run code and we're running this function. You could also change this you know, to any other type of commands. Um, so I'll do a different video on auto execute, but for right now, we're just using it to run this function as soon as the file opens. So if I were to open up the file, it's going to actually run this function right here at start check version. And so what it does is it runs through and it checks whether or not um, it checks the current version 1.0. And then it checks whether or not there's an update, 1.1. And then if there is an update, it's gonna go ahead and update the file or give the user the chance to upgrade. 
So by me importing those five objects into here, I'm then able to start using the upgrades. Let me show you how it works. The first thing you want to do is you want to save your service requests or, you know, your database as an ACCDE file. So it's a lockdown version. Again, I'm assuming you know what that is, uh, but basically in access, and I'll just show you just so you, um, just in case someone watching this doesn't know, you go to file, save as, and then you're just gonna make sure that you save it as an ACDE, which is a lockdown version of the file. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and save it into my network folder. Then all you do is make a copy and paste it into your local databases folder. And you wanna do the exact same thing with the version manager. Now this is the first time we're doing this. Um, and then after we do it a fir the first time, I'll show you, you know, on a routine basis as you're doing updates, you don't have to do all these steps. So go ahead and open up version manager. You save it as an ACDE file and you don't have to place that on the network, but you do have to place that in the local folder. All right, so now your user has the database, they've been using it, so we'll just go ahead and open it. Um, and then we have our hello form in here that we add it. And um, I think right before I did this, I just made sure that it was, oh, it is 1.5. Okay, so we're dealing with version 1.5. And so let's go ahead and do an update. So the user has everything they need. And now let's say you go in here and let's, in addition to hello, let's include a goodbye. So we have our goodbye form and we want to go ahead and update the version. So we go to our version update form and let's make it 1.6 and set the version. Wonderful. And now just go ahead and save it as an A, excuse me, I keep saying the wrong word, ACCDE file and go ahead and place that in the folder. So I just paused it so I could save it actually in the file. Um, so we saved it right here and replaced the old network file. Now, what has happened is we are not going to update their local database. That they're going to do. The next time they open their service request file, what's going to happen is it is going to check whether or not there is an up-to-date version. So right now, remember, this is 1.5. And so I'm going to go ahead and open it. And oops it says a new version is available. And so I'm gonna hit okay, it just goes ahead and closes and it gives me this form which says go ahead and click to upgrade. Now again, the version that I'm showing you, you know, th this is just um, the beginning stages for you. You can take this code, you can make this your own. Obviously you can make this form look a whole lot better. This is just to give you that foundation to be able to create it. So the user go ahead and they click to upgrade. And so just let you know, we're gonna close, we're gonna open it and ready, here we go. And now we have our goodbye form. And so that is the way that you are going to continually update your users. They don't do anything. They just keep the version manager. They keep their database or databases locally. All you have to do is when you update your database and save it as a lockdown version, make a copy, put it in here. And if it's a really important update, all you have to do is you have to tell all of your users to close and reopen their file to make sure that they get the upgrade. So you could just say, we're doing a major upgrade, please close, reopen. And now if there's no upgrade, if I go here and click this, it's not going to prompt me. I have the latest version, it's not gonna prompt me. And remember, again, these databases are like bare minimum. You can make them look beautiful. I'm sure your databases already look beautiful. This is just gonna allow you to manage them better. So let me go ahead and do another up, one last upgrade just so you can see it. So let's say I wanna get rid of the goodbye form. Um, and you know, I'm gonna get rid of the hello form. And I'm gonna go ahead and do an update and let's just do five, or I'm sorry, not five. We'll do nine, 1.9, skip a few, just so you could see it actually update it. And now I go back over to this file, click and open, and what did I miss? I missed something. Oh, <laughs> I'm 
actually glad I recorded this so you don't forget. So I forgot to save it as an ACD file. I didn't even put it in the network folder. <laughs> so let's do that together, won't we? <laughs> so if you ever go to do this and it doesn't work for you, maybe you made a mistake like me. Or maybe you didn't make any mistake and I'm just the one doing it. Okay, now there we go. Now it's updated here. So now when I go to update, it will in fact prompt me that an upgrade is necessary and I can just click to upgrade and I will now have a database that is 1.9 with my objects deleted. And we can just double check the version. Um, oh, last but not least, uh, just a simple little macro that calls a function that if you click on this, it'll tell you the current version you're running. Um, so if you've seen my previous video where I show you the ribbon, you might want to be able to like implement the ribbon and put maybe a button there that says version so the person can click, you know, what version number they're running. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it and I placed the code in the comments. You can also visit our Etsy shop for the files themselves. And either way, please communicate back through the comments. I would love to hear from you. Hit subscribe if you have not already. Stay tuned for more videos.